Hey guys, welcome to Sketch a Day. What's up? It is Fan Friday. We're ready to go. Hopefully you are with your suggestions and your sketches. I'll give you a few minutes to get caught up on the Discord if you're hanging out there. We do have a Discord. That's sketchaday.com slash Discord. Either way, we're just going to be sketching today. I did upload two videos yesterday, actually. And... Uh, <clears throat> had to re-upload them because the audio was off. So if you're wondering why they're up again, that is why. And those videos are on uh, careers, some career advice, you know, how to get business and then how to work with clients. So check that out, just posted. Just posted that on the YouTube. All right, let's see. I think I'm gonna get started. We'll just do a quick review of the Discord here. If you're watching on Instagram, by the way, I have a connection that goes straight to YouTube. It looks much better there. So you can check that out. Height. Also, YouTube is where I'm paying attention to chat. So if you have questions, ideas, whatnot, that's where you need to be. All right. What's up, Felix, Akil, Raul? Hello, hello. If you make a request in chat and I respond with the URL, it probably means that I've already done the uh, topic before. So you can check out that video at sketchday.com slash videos. All right. So this is a little bit of the Discord. We have some submissions here from Mecha Guy. Um, looks like like some sort of headgear, headset. Interesting. I could do... I could do a... Uh, some earbuds or ear earphones today. That'd be fun. And then we have some robotic helmets here by Felix. These remind me a bit of, uh, they have like a Star Wars vibe to them. So nice work. Pretty creative. Looks like you're using a Lamy or Lamy fountain pen right there. I haven't I haven't uh, enjoyed those pens as much as what what we did last Sunday. If you missed it for Sci-Fi Sunday, what's up, Latrice? Blessings to you as well. I'll probably go for an hour, hour and a half today. Keep it tight. So yeah, the last two days. Um, I mean, I'll level with you. Wednesday was was a heavy day for me. I don't know why. I was just kind of depressed and out of sorts. So I decided to. Um, Decided to just take some time to myself. So that was Wednesday. And then, hold up here. What is happening? Anyhow, decided to take some time to myself and regroup. So that's what I did. Okay, cool. You can see that there. Sorry, I'm watching a, f a few things at the same time. So. That's why I wandered off. Anyhow, did that Sunday. And then let's see, we've got mystery here with a helmet. Looks like it's done with colored pencil. It's pretty cool. What's up, Milos? I'll make an exception for you because I like you. But I'm trying to pay attention to the YouTube chat, so feel free to join there. All right. And let's see, we've got age pie. Looks like some sort of space helmet. I was watching a movie last night or yesterday called Midnight Sky. I think it was called Midnight Sky on Netflix. And they had these really cool space helmets there. Those are always fun too. And we've got, of course, our friend Mando. Mando, Mando the Mandalorian here as well. Done by mystery. So thanks for the awesome work. I'll keep an eye on the Discord here as we go. Um, but I think I'm gonna do pen and paper to start. Maybe throw in some digital here and there. I'm not gonna redo your sketches, but nice work. I do have a Mando on the wall right there that I did a while back. So pretty cool. Oh, there's Felix. Been enjoying the fountain pen, refillable aspect of it. Offsets the small downsides. Yeah, I I prefer dip dip ink nib pens say that 10 times fast i prefer the you know traditional dip pen those uh those seem to be a bit better for me
I've also been blowing through paper lately. It's part of my challenge to myself. It is the 500 page sketch challenge. So yeah, we're just chill today. Chill today, no stress. Just bless all of you. Hello, mystery. Mike Lynn, hello, hello. All right, so let's warm up with some straight lines here. So yeah, if you haven't yet, check out the video. Let me know what you think. If you like that sort of thing. Design design career advice. It's actually inspired or prompted by a question that one of our patrons asked. How do you work with clients sometimes? How do you... And I, I tried to hone in on three specific things for each of the videos. Naturally, there's multiple aspects to running a business or being an independent creative. Naturally, a lot going on there, so can't cover it all in one video. All right, let's do some circles here. So today is your day. I don't really want to do any car stuff because I do so much car stuff. Um, but we did have a request for a kick scooter, it looks like. So maybe I'll do a couple of those. I'll make it battery powered or something. Greetings from the Czech Republic. Hello. Is it Thomas or Tomas? All right, circles here. I'm gonna try and use the same sheet of paper so I'm not wasting my paper for my warm up either. The idea here being, I'm just trying to get my muscles nice and warm, primed, ready to go. I have to draw the natural helmet, the skull. <laughs> you know, I haven't drawn a skull in a while. I have not. It's been a minute. But yeah, Wednesday for some reason yep. should have been a happy day for many people. I was just like depressed. It was rough. So I kind of just pulled up and I guess maybe maybe my body was just saying, you know what, you need a break. So I I let myself break down for a bit. Welcome to real mental health talk. <laughs> But yeah, it's important to take care of yourselves, guys. If you feel the need and you have the ability to push pause, take a break in life, it can do wonders for you. All right, so the first request was for some sort of kick scooter. So that's what I'll do first. Probably some light marker. Oh, I'm glad to hear that, Kiryu. Mohammed, you keep asking me the same question and I give you the same answer. There's at least 30 car videos on my website that you can check out. So if you're looking for specifics on how to draw a car, check out sketchday.com slash videos. You don't need to say it 10 times. That's from the chat on YouTube, guys, if you want to make a suggestion or participate. That's where you want to be. So thanks for hanging on our tiny show. Seems like Bernie Sanders took over the internet yesterday. I'm so over it, though. So over it. I'm going to, like, flip my table if I see another one of those memes. It's too much. It must end. Hey, Vasisht, I'm doing well. Um, got a request for a kick scooter, so maybe I'll do a couple. Just lay out on the page here. So in doing this, I'm kind of just establishing um, framework for these scooters. So maybe a base plate here, some way to connect 
do steering. Then another line here. I think I'll throw my wheel out front a little bit. Like so. And back wheel as well. I know hubless things don't exist, or rather are impractical, but maybe we'll go with some sort of hubless hubless wheel here. And this will need to turn, so. I'm gonna fudge it here in the middle, just a little bit. A little bit of a cutout there. Let's get our back wheel in. Something like that. And then our handles here. I guess we could do any on how these seem these seem uh, fairly quick, so depending on quick this thing is. Maybe we'll do a bunch more. Just pen, keeping it simple. Maybe some light marker. The shadings feels a little bit long though. Compared to the height and then the wheel position. Not quite sure on the weight distribution, so I might move move this back in subsequent sketches. A little bit of physics, so you'd want the weight to be more centered, I think, under your steering here. So maybe something like this. Maybe something like that. Hey, Chaitanya. I'm glad you can join. Lucas, what's up? Lynette! Come back. Alden, Mike Lynn. What Logitech mouse model is this? This is the MX Anywhere 2S. I didn't like it at first because I didn't realize that the wheel, you could change the scroll on the wheel. Um, and then I figured that out later that if you depress the wheel, if I just push down, it'll engage, uh, I forgot what it's called, but there's like a smooth or clicky scroll option, I guess you can say. So I discovered that and, uh, that made a huge difference. So yeah, I actually like it now. I also have a Razer mouse. Um, the Razer Basilisk mouse. And then I have a Microsoft Surface mouse. Why do I have so many mice? Well, different computers, different contexts, different use. This is my, my desktop mouse setup here. Also shout out to Paul Sohi for the beats, tunes, the tunes. Put a little light on this scooter or something. That way people can see you. Maybe a little, little phone mount. Not that you want to be looking at your scooter while you're scooting along, but it would be nice to have it handy. At least I think it would. All right, let's keep going here. Yeah, I'm trying to remember what the front wheel looks like. I think I'm going to have to look at look at some reference for the mechanical bits here. Uh, 
Uh, let's see. Ah, okay. See, that's what I was missing. So the deck stops here and then there's like a connector piece. The perspective here is really weird, so you're not going to see it. There's like a little connector piece there. But then... Attaches to the wheels. So I'll do this again. We'll do a couple more sketches as we figure this out. But yeah, sometimes sometimes you do have to do... You do have to do the do multiple sketches to figure it out, figure something out. It's been a good year so far. I got some some workshop requests from people, schools, some businesses. So if you guys want to get in on that and you're a part of a business, hit me up, let me know. grateful for those who've referred or reached out. Much love and appreciation to you. Just a reminder, on Sunday we do Sci-Fi Sunday, so if you like robots, aliens, spaceships, creatures, weird stuff, have ideas, suggestions, join the show on Sunday. That'll be same bat time, same bat channel here on sketch a day so I don't know if you guys know where the name sketch day came from so maybe I'll tell that story so a long time ago I started a website called idsketching.com it was more industrial design focused specifically less general drawing and as a challenge I noticed my skills were kind of slipping as I became a professional. I'll redo these. Um, as I became a professional, I noticed my skills were slipping quite a bit. And I didn't like that feeling. I didn't like feeling that, you know, I was getting worse. And I suppose that's subjective, but I didn't like that feeling. So what I decided is that I would commit commit to the internet that I would sketch every day and you know I haven't always been perfect at it that's for sure let's cut this guy off I haven't always been perfect at it but I've tried to maintain at least some habitual practice of sketching hey Marzi hey Lions Yakir, Tom, what's up? Long time. Are you still doing the military stuff? Can I say what other projects I'm working on? I'm currently in the bidding phase for... Um, how do I describe this? A personal medical device. I'm working on a... I'm trying, to I'm trying to think of how to describe these without being specific. A wayfinding and illumination system for uh, transportation. And then a couple furniture projects, commission pieces that I'll design and build. Anyhow, so I promised myself to the internet and to the internet that I would draw every day so that's why I do it and you know I've mentioned this on my lives before but one good way to make sure that you follow through on commitments is to just break it down into a few small things so even the idea that hey I'm gonna make sure I sketch at least one page day that's enough for me to manage and to be able to say okay that is that is my goal of the day one page something and it does make a difference the more you sketch the more confident you'll feel and your ability to communicate ideas 
will improve and increase. So whenever I sketch something new, it usually takes me a few um, iterations of the thing to get comfortable sketching it. So this is part of that process, just trying to understand the mechanics of this kick scooter. You know, nice rough sketch here. Something like that. Thanks for joining the chat on YouTube. If you moved over from a few other uh, areas, appreciate it. I'm glad you're back. Oh, nice. Are you doing a Zoom lesson like teaching? Hello, Paulina says for school i have to do a sketching book any ideas on what to sketch um whenever i run out of ideas i just draw from observation so i'll just create a scene throw something down and then that'll be kind of it for me this could be i like drawing bottles right now those are fun um, but it could be things like, see, now I kind of understand, you know, how to get the wheel to turn and stuff so I can at least sketch something practical as opposed to what I had initially. So that's where reference comes in mind. And then when you have a grasp on things, you can also change things as well. Um, but yeah, whenever I'm out of ideas, I just draw from observation. And as you can see, drawing from observation is a way of basically informing yourself as to the nature of something. You know, what is that thing? How does it look? How does it work? How does it function? And so forth. Am I excited for the next offsite? Yes, absolutely. We just, thanks, that's a great question. So for those who don't know, offsite is an online educational experience that uh, myself, I'm involved with it, and a few notable professionals as well. Michael Batulo, Kat Reiser, Dominic Montante, Hector Silva, many more people are involved in, um, specifically industrial design related, but we right, we're trying to do try to do the educational thing a little bit differently so it's all live classes it's all online it's not so much you know how to draw how to do those things but how do you take your skills and and level up you know whatever that means for you um, i actually don't teach a sketching class there i teach a class called design discourse and it's all about Forming your point of view, articulating, communicating that point of view in a way that sets you up to be a successful designer. So lots of things you do learn as a professional, sometimes the hard way, but we kind of package that. It's a lot of critical thinking, going deep on yourself, your ideals, your principles, things like that. So it sounds... Probably sounds weird. It's like, whoa, Spencer, you're teaching a, a class on, on discussion, and it's like, yeah, um, one of the most valuable skills I learned, have learned, I guess, as a professional, is how to communicate. Because if you can't communicate your ideas, your intent can't discuss things with people, you're gonna have a rough time as a professional. So learning how to be diplomatic, but also persuasive, clear, that's what I do. But yes, I digress. I am excited for the next cohort. Um, applications have closed, but we are going to be plugging along, continuing Through the summer all year round that's the plan um, again just offering things that 
you won't get any traditional design school or environment. That's the idea. And it also may sound weird that it's all online, but we actually have a community aspect to things. So even the idea of, you know, okay, what, is, what does a studio culture mean in an online setting? How do you deliver on that? You know, the studio for me anyways in college is where I made many friends, some lifelong friends, feature clients, things like that. Let's do one more scooter. Oh, nice. That's, that's good that Danny's helping you out, man. That's awesome, Tom. Do my references ever cloud my thoughts to design something new? No. I mean, so for example, with the steering mechanism on the scooter, right, if I look at it, simply put, we've got a wheel and we have a post right through here, right? And that's going to allow the wheel to turn. Right, so we have this, this pivot and we have wheel. So understanding the structure, I can then modify the aesthetics, right? And say even, even something simple like, all right, cool. Maybe I have this little cap here. We'll go with low hanging fruit first. And then we also have, you know, something to encapsulate this. Uh, I'm trying to think of what to call it. Steering column, axis, whatever. And then you have the deck, all right? So you have the deck. So understanding this makes it a little bit easier. I guess angle wise, I should have angled um, that way a bit. All right. But at least I have the build. I have the basic building blocks. Okay. So wheels turn. All right. Wheels turn. You know, pivot's gonna turn like I drew before, and then the deck is gonna give give us stability. Um, there's probably some structural or engineering considerations here in terms of the distance from the deck but that being said um, understanding all that and maybe maybe using a gray marker would help me here just a bit so I'm just gonna grab a light gray marker I mean, you could do a three-wheel scooter. That was a suggestion. So if this is the deck, right, and I know I have a wheel, the wheel up front needs to be able to turn. Um, something inside my brain says if I have two wheels turning, it's going to be a lot harder to turn. It's possible, but it might be more stable as opposed to, you know, two wheels on the back. So I could do a scooter that has two wheels on the back. There's one idea. Right, but I would try and maintain, even if I were modifying this, I would try and maintain this relationship somehow. Um, let's see, in terms of how the wheel turns, however, that's where you can kind of get creative. Like, I don't know, this probably wouldn't work unless, yeah, so if the, the wheel could go forward, but then maybe, so maybe you have a, a skate deck. That is, let's see if I can draw this. All right, so the wheel's encapsulated here. Hey, NYC Tours, thank you very much for your super chat. Much love to you. Also, welcome to new patron, Arthur Hatton. Thanks for the support, Arthur. All right, so maybe the, the wheel could be here where it's, it's front mounted a bit more. And then in terms of turn radius, right, we'd have to clear out a spot here for turn radius so this thing could turn. So it gets it gets more complicated. And then from the top view, what does that mean, right? So I've got the wheel here, something attaching to the wheel, and then we have a pivot here, right? Maybe it means that there's a piece underneath this all connects to, so I could change the shape. 
and in doing so does that does that create any advantages i don't know and so that's that's the open question i i as a designer you kind of have to think through okay what's my rationale let me let me draw a bit and clear this up but you have to kind of think what's my rationale what's my reason for doing this um does this make functional sense for the user is it manufacturing all right so if i have pivot here and i'm gonna change this a little bit something like that all right so if i have some sort pivot here Right through there and then we have something like this this is all to answer your question Vasisht that does does this arrangement right maybe it doesn't need to be this thick whatever but does this configuration have any functional advantage over the traditional, right? So what is the, what is the functional delta or advantage? And is it worth doing something different? Um, trying something different just to be different isn't always the best way to go as a designer, contrary to what you might think. You kind of have to have a reason or rationale for your decision that touches on the business, the user, or the feasibility, meaning okay, how likely is it that this thing will be made if I do X, Y, Z. So. You know, if I if I propose something different, now I'm thinking about cost. You know, is it the use or is it the you know, build? You know, what what is what does this mean for these three things? And if I can't, hey, and one of our channel members, welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you for your contribution, your support, love. High five to you. Basish says, friction increases doing this. Maybe, maybe not. You can do ball bearings. There's all sorts of things you could do, fluid joint, but um, potentially you've got, you know, maybe it's increased cost. Maybe it's increased complexity of build. Maybe the, the, use, the use case could be diminished, right? So those are all things you kind of have to think about as a designer. I feel like if you're doing something like this um, and you're trying to just do something different. So aesthetics is one thing. And usually I don't dive into aesthetics until the function is, these wheels are like fat, until the function's figured out. I usually don't dive right into aesthetics, at least in, in real projects. Um, sometimes that's decided up front for you, depending on the project you're working on. Other times that is something you kind of have to figure out, work in tandem or conjunction with someone like a mechanical engineer. To review ideas, make suggestions, and then, then you can get your solution. So yeah, maybe the three-wheeler, pretty standard, but... I wouldn't put I mean I know they have scooters that are three-wheeled up front but I feel like it would be harder to maneuver I don't know you guys tell me if you like three-wheeled scooters the wheel in the back better but good idea good suggestion much appreciated um, but yeah we just did a little quick exploration on some scooters here quick sketches and a discussion on how you'd go about designing those. All right. So what other suggestions do you guys have? What would you like to see? I'm going to take a little copy break here. 
happy Friday to you and yours. Thanks again. Safety for kids. Yeah, I can see that. So you sacrifice sacrifice some of the uh, fluidity, perhaps, in the scooter for stability. Fluidity for stability. I'm okay with that trade-off. That seems that seems okay. Can't get good speed with a three-wheel scooter. Kid who gets left behind by the rollerblading friends. Have you ever thought about taking a break from sketching? Um, yeah, sometimes I take breaks, for sure. Sometimes I take breaks. This month is my 500 page challenge that I'm doing. I'm not gonna finish it by the end of the month. I will say that up front because I've had things come at me sideways. So I've had to take a little break here and there. All right, maybe, maybe we'll keep doing scooters. We can do another you know, scooter. We got RC car. I don't really wanna do an RC car. We got a request for a skull. I'd have to look at reference for a skull. But we could do, do a few skulls. All right, if you are watching on Insta, once again, I'm paying attention to the uh, YouTube comments and chat. That's where I'm hanging out, but I will say hello to you all. <laughs> or whatever other Patreon, or not, over the, not Patreon, whatever other platform you're watching on. Where did I grow up? I grew up in Jamaica. That's where I grew up. All right, let's try and do, I'll just try and do a serious scooter. Like I actually care about how the final sketch looks. How about that? We can do that. I use comparisons to Hitler to win arguments on the internet at the drop of a hat. All right, so let's get our ellipses here. I know that may sound funny. What do you mean, like you actually care? All right, got our little piece there. I'll do the platform. So it can function as a little bit of a break. Typically, typically it does. Uh, I'm trying to think. Oh, I guess this could go something like that. And now front wheel. Throw in some spoke looking things here. I've never actually designed a scooter, so, like, I've never been, you know, paid to do a scooter of any kind. It'd certainly be a fun project. our little handle. Um, I'm gonna throw on some sort of, what do you call this again? Cam, cam lever. Just hint at it. And that way I can show that yes, even though I ran out of space on the page, this is adjustable. Maybe 
something like that. What's this black pen called? This is the Paper Made Flare. You can find out more information using that link. Link to the stuff I use. It's a little bit, a little bit rough today. I don't know if it's because I was working out or I'm just being lazy. But like I said, usually it takes it takes a few it takes a few sketches to kind of um, there's some audio coming from something I don't know where. Let's see, getting some feedback. What is happening here? Ah. I think I found the culprit. I think I did. Yeah, there we go. I was, uh, so I have to monitor the stream wherever it's streaming. And in monitoring the stream, I was getting just some audio feedback. So that's what was happening there. Thankfully, I have a super fast internet connection upgraded to gigabit, gigabit speed last year. It's kind of nice, actually. I don't know about you guys, but internet in the United States is expensive for what you you get, from what I hear. From what I hear. So yeah, I decided to combine this uh, pivot thing here. So I have to combine that into a little bit of a kind of wheel flare. And I definitely want to fill this page up, so I gotta think. Maybe I could do another another scooter sketch. Maybe a different one. I did like the integrated light that I had on this other one. This could be a vignette or it could be the whole thing. But I did like the idea of this integrated light. Something like that. Safety first, children. Welcome to the Scooter Show. I guess it kind of turned into the Scooter Show. What was the feedback saying about my sketches? <laughs> I was just hearing myself talk to myself, which is always weird. That's all it is. But yes, I'm using a Papermate Flare currently. what I'm using. Sometimes I jump all over a sketch too, I realize. Anyhow, I do like this pen. It's a bit rougher and not as fine as, say, you know, a gel pen might be, or something like your Sakura pens. Sunday will be fun though. I think I'll do some more scribble challenge stuff. That's where I take a scribble, turn it into something. That'll be pretty fun. But yeah, this pen, um, it is nice because it doesn't bleed with marker. It's fairly cheap, but it also has its limitations. So let's not get it twisted. Let's not get it too twisted here. All right, maybe a little little core core shadow reflection thingy, like so. But yeah, I'm feeling better. Wednesday was kind of rough. Um, I was in my feels, in my head, just worried about life. I don't know, like something just came over me, pretty much. And I just, I just kind of checked out all day. Like even my kids were like, are you okay? And I was like, I will be. A little bit of personal, 
truth there for you guys. But I am optimistic. I'm hopeful that everything in life will be okay. And I appreciate, appreciate you guys and your uh, words of encouragement, your support. All that means a lot to me, so thank you. All right, let's do a vignette of a deck. So yeah, now that now that you've sketched a few of these, you can start to get creative with things like the layout. Uh, mind you, this is freehand without an underlay. And so by necessity, things may feel or seem a little bit rough. I'm just gonna shade this in. Probably doesn't make sense, but I like sometimes sometimes when you're sketching you just like you just have to like go with it. Just be like, boom, that's what I'm doing. You know? I'm gonna make a change here. I'm gonna bring this deck back. And then it'd be cool if you know if, if this edge is nice and thick and fat that it could roll up into a fillet here. Just be like this solid, solid piece. Maybe do a little material split through here. Something like that. This, uh, the steering column is like cranked way back. Cranked way back. And that's a fat wheel in the front. <laughs> but it's okay, I'll make it work. So yeah, check out my video. Um, video was actually just uploaded. They are on uh, being an independent creator, working with clients, finding clients. So if that's something you're interested in, check it out if you have additional questions let me know i know the videos aren't super detailed and i don't talk about specifics like how much to charge per hour that kind of thing but broader concepts to kind of help you out if that's something you're working on curious about little shadow here and then I think I'll call this one good still haven't used any marker though so what would you like to see next oh yeah there was a request for a skull of some sort that one I'd have to look at reference for but I could do it the theme this week was helmets and headgear we could do some headgear for the scooters as well could do that the theme and by theme i mean we have a discord we do weekly sketch challenges you can show your work participate in the community get help um tom in the youtube chat was just saying that he's working with danny c danny chang i think his last name um i just go by instagram handles with people yeah don't you know flying monkey 682 um but Danny c is a car designer that's in the forum super talented I know there's people that are really good at photography, 3D rendering, whatever. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be just about sketching. So if, you, if you're looking for some feedback or help, whatever, check it out. Or if you want to give feedback, you know, if you just want to see what's up, you can check that out. Sketchday.com slash discord. Patrick Monkman, what's your advice for overcoming perfectionism when sketching? Um, I think it starts with what is your objective in sketching? Is your objective to be perfect or to communicate? If you think of sketching as a language, much like spoken language, the precision with which you can encapsulate and deliver a concept does give you some admiration, but it has more to do with 
your empathy and delivery than it does necessarily the words with which you use to articulate those concepts. In fact, sometimes when you use big words, you can alienate people, no doubt. Much like being a little too tight in your sketch. So finding the right balance is going to take some work and some practice. Responding to clients or your audience if you're you know, doing stuff online. I, I tend to prefer uh, loose sketching. It's kind of what I do. concept I talk about in my inking guide forthcoming I, don't know her. I think once I finish my challenge I, I definitely bit off more than I could chew I will admit to that I I was like I'm gonna do this 500 page challenge in January and I'm gonna finish these guides at the same time and I'm gonna parent I'm gonna work I'm gonna do all the things and then you realize oh crud you cannot do all the things I don't know her. at least not all at once Sometimes you got to pump the brakes. Pump on the brakes. Looks like I shaded in the side of my scooter here accidentally. So I'll just make that a little bit darker, separate from the shadow, almost like a material thing. Some texture here. There you go. There you go. Two scooters. So, you know, we started kind of rough trying to figure things out. Kept going, working it out, thinking. That's where we ended up. Alright. So. Yes, Danny does have a Patreon as well. Scooter helmet with a no fear skull. I mean, that would satisfy the skull requirement. I could do I could do some quick skulls though. Um, like I said, I'd have to look at some reference. I'm not an anatomical expert by any means. Not at all. And I don't use that merely as an as an excuse, but rather just letting you guys know that it is not my forte. Yeah, see, I feel like I've already messed up here. Doing a quick skull. Pen and ink style. This feels sinister for some reason. It feels like very, very sinister of a skull. Keep it loose. See, I don't even I don't even want to like freaking count teeth and all that, so we'll just keep it whatever. I really don't want to count teeth. Have you ever looked at a baby skull though? If you never want to have kids, look at a baby skull. And it'll scare you out of ever ever having kids. I'll tell you what. Look at a baby skull. I know it, it sounds weird, like, why is he telling me to look at a baby skull? But my brother um, showed this to me once. It's an interesting dude, but showed that to me, and I was like, whoa. I think the eye socket is too. It's like misplaced or something here. That's the problem. But all you anatomical experts will be like, that's wrong. Ha ha ha. I'll probably get that in the comments later. Anyhow, look at a baby skull. If you never want to have kids, or at least be scared out of having kids, go look it up. Baby skull. Yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. <laughs> More great parenting advice from Spence. It's terrifying, Lions. Have you seen? It's like straight up terrifying. 
You might be wondering, why is it terrifying? Just Google it. Baby, human baby skull or baby human skull. And you will see, you will see what I mean. All right, so much like any other sketch, it usually takes me a few times to get the gist of something. So I'm gonna try another another angle here. And I'm just kind of making this up, so I think I'll just do just one page of these, but the challenge this week, for those wondering, maybe you're not wondering, maybe you're just like, I'm just here to watch you draw, dude. But the challenge this week was, see, that's, that's too much right there. Um, Challenge this week was helmet, helmet and headgear related. Mystery suggested, or maybe it was besieged, suggested uh, I do a skull. So here we are doing skulls of some sort. Because why not? Quick sketches, obviously. Let's see, let's get this freaking draw jawbone. Drawbone. Let's see here. Glowing lights from my Apple Watch. Oh yeah, right there. Got my workout in, like I said. Let's see, how am I doing already? 400 calories already today. Drawing skulls, Hannah. Ghost Rider Scooter. <laughs> I could see that. <clears throat> so floating human skulls. It's good practice, though. Thank you for pushing me, as always. So I can do some some small ones. Now that I have a little bit of the gist. A little bit. Do some thumbnails here. Suppose I suppose a pen is is also not the easiest or best way to do this. Just my guess, but you know, I could be wrong. But yeah, just picking up on your cues things here. one there so you know just kind of referencing top and bottom doing another one here super quick super quick pen sketch what is your guys's favorite thing to draw i'm curious so on your own time and your own dime what do you guys like to to draw just a reminder i am watching the youtube chat just too hard for me to keep up with everything but I do want to say hello to everyone watching wherever you are 
Thanks for the support. And I guess somewhat related to a question earlier, you know, hey, what do you, what do you sketch in your sketchbook? Especially when you don't know what to sketch. For me, it's uh, robots, spaceships right now. Um, I've also been kind of doing these weird sci-fi things, but decided to do some shoes in my spare time today. So that's what I'll be doing. Landscape, pretty gardens, old bricks. Old bricks are fun. The Capitol and White House. With uh, what pens are you using? Super detailed pens? Let's see, one, two, three, four. Wow, five pages already. Crazy. All right. When did I start drawing? I started drawing, um, I started drawing in, let's do some quick helmets. I started drawing when I was younger, like when, when I was just a little boy, when I was in elementary school, basically. And I guess part of what was inspiring me at the time, things like uh, comic books. My brother was a comic book dude. Maybe this helmet has a little bit of a, a visor here. Anyhow, he's a comic book dude, and so I would always just kind of ogle and look at his comics. I quite enjoyed that. I'm not really feeling this helmet. Maybe it needs a skull. <clears throat> Product design, backpacks. Backpacks are fun. Backpacks are fun too. Both show. But yeah, as for when I when I started taking drawing seriously, it was when I was like when I started design school. That's when I I actually started taking it seriously. I'm not really sketching um, helmets with a purpose in mind here. You know, if this were a motor motor scooter helmet, for example, I assume <clears throat> you wouldn't have cutouts on the top, but maybe we would. I don't know. May have to ask ask some helmet designers if there are any here watching. What considerations do you make when designing a helmet? Doing a quick honeycomb thing here. Nice and sweet honeycomb. Redo old sketches. Oh yeah, we could do that. That would be a good challenge. Re redo your old sketch. If you did one before so yeah once again check out check out the uh career advice video that i just put out if you're, if you're 
curious. I don't know if this would actually work because this might be uncomfortable on the side of your head. You probably need some significant padding here. Right? I imagine you would. Some sort of padding on that one. As a general rule, too, um, for those who are more in the product design field, I try to fill up a page if possible. So even, you know, deciding up front, hey, I'm going to put some things in these spots kind of help. Help me at least set a target for myself to say, yep, I'm going to fill in, fill in these pages. And I guess I haven't used marker today. <laughs> <laughs> I have not. It's just so much faster. Just using pen. I mean, you can do a lot with a pen, too. And I have, to be fair, I have been in a pen and ink mode lately. Mode? Mood? Lately. So it feels natural to just, just go all pen with everything. Honeycomb helmet structure would be tough. Possibly. Watch out for them bees. Stinger. Or whatever that is. I'll just label it B, so there's no doubt that that's a B. Um, once again, I will be uploading the sketches from the live, right? Meaning this presentation to the Patron and channel member folder. Maybe this is an AR helmet. I guess we could do that. Um, to the Patron and channel member folder on Google Drive. So if you are a channel member or Patron and need access to that, hit me up. Discord, Instagram, email. Unfortunately, YouTube, for some reason, I just realized this, does not... Um, it makes it really hard to communicate. So... Like, I don't have anyone's email or anything like that. Also, be sure to sign up for the newsletter. I have some things in the works um, that I'm hoping to get done in the next couple months. And they'll be released to newsletter peeps first. So if you haven't yet, take a minute, sign up for the newsletter. You also get a discount to the store if you want brushes and... If you are a channel member or patron and you've been so for two months and you want some brushes, hit me up. I got you, boo. I got you, fam. Much appreciated for the support. Much love to you and yours. There's this really cool helmet in Star Wars. I don't remember. It looks something like this. Do you know what I'm talking about? If this if this is the, the person here it's like this really cool i think it goes back to i don't remember it's like this really cool do you know the helmet i'm talking about like some sort of trooper helmet All right, here's a general question. You don't have to answer this one, but I am curious. What has 2020 taught you? You know, a lot of people were like frustrated by 2020 and how unpredictable things seemed, all that stuff. The dudes who fired the Death Star. Yep, exactly. What is something that you All episodes are uploaded to YouTube. I don't leave stuff on Instagram or... I guess it's on Facebook too. I don't leave stuff on Instagram because Facebook doesn't really compensate creators. So I'd much prefer if you watched on YouTube. Just letting you know that. That's why, frankly. Um, their job is to blow up planets. Yeah, we watched Rogue One last night. And... Let's do a big helmet with maybe some marker or something. Um... We watched, we watched a little Rogue One, or not a little, we finally finished our, our Star Wars run 
as a family. That was pretty, pretty fun. I'm gonna put a visor on this helmet. Anyhow, it's fun. Because sometimes when you watch, um, you know, like the Star Wars movies again, or any movie really, you just catch different things. And I definitely caught a lot of different things in uh, I guess I like this this ear allowance that I keep doing. Um <laughs> But caught a lot of things in, in the rewatching of Rogue One. It's pretty cool. Uh this the Han Solo movie was okay. I mean, I didn't hate it, but I also didn't love it. Also didn't love it. So yeah, if you're wondering why my streams have not been on Instagram lately, that's why, because Facebook basically is like, give us everything you have, everything creative you have, and we will give you nothing in return. And to me, that doesn't feel good. And they won't outright say that, but that is essentially what's happening. I don't know, maybe they'll ban me. Silence me now, maybe. But that's that's basically what they do. So the explosion train, yeah, that's a cool scene. Um, is a cool scene. Okay, I'm trying to think about the shading on this guy before I commit here. Um, let's see. I'm thinking of the scene. Yeah, it's it's basically impossible to do with just markers, unless I get my ear marker situation going which i could do yeah why not let's have some fun just a sec guys got a little tangle here All right, let's see what we can do. I haven't used these in a while. Fine, I'll use the expensive markers. They did it in a fish tank, which I'm trying to think which explosion scene that is that they did in a fish tank. Let's keep going here. What is this? This was red eight.
Let's see how this goes. This could end up terrible. I'm not really... I'm not using a... Uh, marker paper. So this could... This could just be terrible. I guess if it is terrible, I can always redo it. Can always redo it, but it's definitely not. Um, it's not a marker paper. Not a marker paper today. So what I'm trying to do here now is just get like some hard reflections in the side. Cause then I won't need like a clean transition on this highlight on the helmet. So whenever I'm whenever I'm dealing with things like reflections or environments, I just try to imagine you know, what, potentially, what's being reflected into this object or this thing? How do I, how do I kind of show that, right? So if you study um, car reflections, things like that, if you study car reflections, and by that I mean just stop and breathe and look in the parking lot when you see a car you can you can quite easily pick up on i think your own way or your own system of of figuring this out that's why drawing from observation is important because this is not marker paper i don't want to and i don't want to end my markers you can see it's bleeding through on the back I don't want to end my markers, so I'm going to be a little bit careful here. Be a little bit careful here. Yes, this is an airbrush. It's a little airbrush attachment. Um, I actually talk about it in my marker guide. It's also available on the website. Um, if you're a patron, you actually have access to the guide immediately. <laughs> if you go to that Google Drive folder, patron or channel member, but it's just this little attachment and you shove the marker in there and then you can kind of spray with colors. So pretty handy. I like it. It's just a fun little attachment that I got for my air marker, or sorry, my markers some time ago. All right, I think, hope they don't ruin this. This red's kind of intense, but I do need a little bit more, a little bit more of a core right here. Maybe something like that. Where can you get one of these? Um, I'm pretty sure the link is in that guide, but if you just search on Amazon for air marker, and they, there's a couple different brands. Um, there's, uh, I think it's called the e-brush. 
well. I think that's what it's called, eBrush, something like that. But that is also um, electric. This one's an Iwata, and the adapter is actually Copic brand. And it's made so that the markers will actually snap into it. All right, so that's another reason I do like Copic markers. The accessories are pretty fun. Yeah, Marzi, I'm glad you were able to see that. Just a fun little, little attachment. I've used it before on the show here. That's fun. Fun doodad. Probably use some gray on this, but I'll get some texture going. Okay, and then I have this like visor that I had sketched in. So one of the best ways to show transparency is throw in like a background on your sketch. Throw in a background like that and then we can work with this to show transparency pretty easily. And I'm trying to like pull the focus away or like this is a focus here so as I move away from the main portion of the sketch right I'm trying to reduce the detail but also just create some clarity on the helmet portion or the hard shell portion I should say all right, so what is this? I gotta decide what is this. I just put this little cut in here. I think I'll make it a cut out. And I can just make this dark. Something like that. And then the visor itself. Uh, I'm gonna use like a really so I have these two Copic markers snow green and pale porcelain blue B000 just means really 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 light all right so I'm gonna use this really really light blue here you can barely see it just really really light there Take care, mystery. Looks like a helmet. It is a helmet. Thanks for joining, Star Swirl. I, I didn't get inception. It is a helmet, most definitely. All right, so that was B000. And then for a little bit here, extra value, I can use this B01. Just a little bit. A little bit of uh, reflection right through there. Like so. So I was just trying to find a gray marker. And then now I'll just add, add some gray here. But yeah, this is not marker paper, so I don't want to overdo it with the marker application. Because um, basically I'm just wasting the marker if I do that. All right. So I'll, I'll upload this to the drive, like I said. We'll scan this in. So we did some iterations of helmets here, just as a quick recap. Those are marker helmets. Some skulls. 
uh, skate deck. What is this? Uh, scooter decks. More scooters. Rough sketch. And a little bit more thought out overlap sketch. Kind of weird, but it works. That's what we've done so far. So like I said, I was going to go... Ah, only going to go for about an hour and a half. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Is there some sort of compressor attached to this? Yes, there is a compressor attached. Um, how do you get good at sketching? I would say draw from your observation. So look at stuff and draw it, right? So whether it's, hey, I'm gonna draw some bananas, I'm gonna draw trees or people, draw those things and try and see where you can apply those ellipse skills or line skills to your drawing okay um also look at other artists and illustrators work and see if you can pull inspiration don't just copy but see if you can pull apart what they do um, whether by watching them and then come up with your own uh, style all right thanks so much for watching guys much love to you thanks to nyc tours for the super chat much appreciated um always always solid and coming through um so I, I i do appreciate it also thanks to the patrons and channel members if you don't know what that is patreon is a way for you to support your creators people like me who uh put their work out there so you can go to patreon.com slash sketch a day and check out the tiers and levels that are offered and choose how you'd like to support you can also hit the join button on the youtube channel and that's another way to uh, make a monthly commitment and support what I'm doing. That being said, I'll always do what I do, um, as promised. But a couple, couple little perks are available for patrons and the like. Things like brushes, guides, and stickers, and all the sketches from the streams. As I always say, passion is the process. Thanks so much for your love and what you do. And keep it up if you want to get better at sketching and the like definitely take some time to sit with someone explain what you've learned because that's going to make you better in the long run promise you that all right take care happy friday much love and i'll catch you guys next time right here on sketch day oh on sunday for sci-fi sunday we'll be back take care guys